year and a half. I wanted a teacher that cared until I got you in I know. Because I don't want to teach you. You got too much, much of a teacher that cared, huh? Exactly. You're the character that can't pick if you want to be good or bad. That's it. I can't decide if I want to be good or bad. It's not that y'all can't decide if I am good or bad. It's like over the Thanksgiving break, right? I got super excited. I was like, oh my god. Mr. Kenny has had a come to Jesus meeting and he did not give me homework. And then over the weekend, I was like, oh, oh man, Jesus time him not to give me homework. And then what did you do? You gave me homework. I didn't make I didn't make you do homework over Thanksgiving break. I thought that was very nice and generous. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was very surprised when you said that. Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, spring break. Those are your three times without homework. Uh, when did you do that last year? Every other year? night. Every other night. Every other night. Oh, uh, last year I don't think I did, but you know, well, actually, y'all wouldn't remember spring break because we never came back after spring break. Yeah, but you said that Friday because I wasn't there that Friday. Oh. And then it got canceled in the middle of spring break. Okay. Number, oh yeah, because you had a fishing tournament, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Three and four. What, first off, Krill, what were you going to say about three and four? How, did, how could you approach it? If I remember correctly, from what you told me, is that from why the top part, because two different uh, parts of it, right? Yep. So for the top part, the Y, and the S2 on the bottom for C. Okay, so the y has to equal two. No, two. Now notice c is not the only answer with y equals two, though. Yeah, I know, but um, I'm not done. I'm just kidding. Oh, my okay, so I plugged in negative uh, two for. Uh, I mean, I multiply negative two times four eight. I think. See, I ain't got one word for it. It's kind of hard for me to get a word for it, but I'm trying to remember. That's why you're supposed to have. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, but I think I. I think I did that, I'm not sure. Well, let me remind you this. So first off, we know the y has to be 2, right? Yeah. Does that eliminate any of the answers? Yes. Which one? B. Okay. Now, what you need to remember, Corel, is this 2 is the y value. What is the negative 2? The x value. So it's not that you're multiplying negative 2 times negative 4x. You're plugging negative 2 in for x. Right. X. And then if I plug negative 2 in for x and 2 in for y, 2 equals negative 4 times negative 2 minus 6. So that gives me 8 minus 6. Eight, is that true? Hmm? Is that true? Yeah, 8 2. So that point makes the bottom equation true. Does that point make the top equation true? Yeah. That's what it was. Remember, the solution to an equation is the value that makes the equation true. true. But when I look at this again, I don't understand how we got before now. Well, I mean, it's, well, first off, I will point out the solution is the value that makes an equation true. But how many equations do we have here? Two. Two, and those have two variables. And there's two values here for each point. So this point made both equations true. true. So this point should make both equations true. So you can quickly check that. Does negative 2 equal 2 times negative 3 plus 4? If you do the work, it does. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is equal to negative 5. Also true. Now I'm going to talk about the work I chose for it because it is different. Now that is very straightforward, very simple, but I'm going to talk about the reason I did the way I did it. Uh, but first, Peyton, you had a question. Did you just do the whole vocab? Because I asked one of my friends over the weekend because I forgot, and he said do the whole thing. First two words. And the first two columns. I'm done. It was the first two columns of the first two words. Oh, okay. You yeah. the whole thing? That's great. Yeah. <laughs> if you have the whole thing when you show up tomorrow, I might not count it against you for turning it in late. Uh, yeah. But also, <laughs> we, we haven't even done all those words. Yeah, I had to Google it. We only did the first four words. I Googled it. And I, that's why I only assigned the first two. I Googled it. Yep. Nope. That was, that was not a good Remember, the, the first column says personal definition from working through the task. Actually, that's the second column. I just Googled it. But that's not what I want you to do. These should be summaries of what we have been learning. Like, that's the reason why I have the vocab graphic organizer set the way I, I do, is because I don't want you to Google the answers. I want you to go back to the task and think through, okay, what have I learned about this word based on this task? Mm -hmm. The thinking and the reflecting on what you've done, that's the most important part. Okay. Um, but Corel, what I would point out to you, or what I would tell all of you, and the reason I set this problem, or I word these problems out the way I did is, it's really easy when you're given points to plug those points in, right? Mm -hmm. But if I didn't give you these points, it kind of be hard. 
It'd be kind of hard, right? Yeah. But it's not terrible. Y is equal to 2. So what could that 2 take the place of? Wow. So 2, that y value is 2, equals negative 4x minus 6. What can you now do? Right. Subtract what? When I look at this equation, I'm already subtracting 6. Oh, add 6. So add 6. Yeah. Then what do you do it after that? Then add 6 on the other side, which it would be 2x. 2 plus 6 is? 8. 8. Notice 8 is equal to negative 4x. So then what do you do? Um, 5. 5? It's turning 4. But yeah, what is it? Negative 4. There you go. Do it on both sides, and so I get x equals negative 2. Notice, that is the solution, but what is this process you just went through? It's another S word, right? The process that allows us to find the solution is called... Solving. Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't that make sense? The thing that allows me to find the solution is called solving. Desiree, make sure your mask is up over your nose, please. So, we solved this equation. And we already knew that y was 2, now x is negative 2, so there's my point. Make sense? Yeah. But look at this equation, right? Or these, this system. By the way, why do you think we call it a system of equations? Why isn't it just called an equation? Why is it a system of equations? Can you solve for x and y? Okay, that's part of it, why it's a system. How many equations are there? Two. So is that more than one, or is it one? Anytime it's more than one, we call it a system. Yeah, you can even have times when there's three. Still a system. Sometimes there's four equations. <clears throat> still a system. Anytime it's more than one equation, it's a system of equations. Yeah. Um, but notice in this one, I don't have y equals a number, but I do have y equals 2x plus 4. So what could that 2x plus 4 take the place of? The x and the y? Yeah. What is it equal to? When it was y equals 2, what could take the place of y? 2. So when it's y equals 2x plus 4, what can take the place of y? 2x plus 4. I'm substituting that in for y. That's what we really call that. Anyone want to take a shot in the dark what that method would be called where we substitute something in? Substituting? Close. Substitution? Substitution. Wow, that was a brain take away. I, but like... <laughs> This is what I want you to understand about math, is it's not supposed to make it really hard. Slope, intercept, form. What two things do you need to write that equation of a line? Slope, slope and definitely not intercept. I know, right? Slope and definitely not a y-intercept. Oh, wait. That, that is what we need. What about for point slope? What do you need? Oh, my God. I guess I'm almost dumb. Point and a slope, right? Mathematicians are not original. They're not trying to make it hard. They're trying to help you know what you're supposed to have, right? So when I look at this, right? When I, I look at this, uh, I'm substituting it for y, and so now I have a single equation. And I'm going to simplify 3x, and I'm going to use my inverses, subtract 4, divide by 3, and it comes out to be that x is equal to negative 3. We good with that? Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't found the y value yet, but if x is equal to negative 3, what can that negative 3 take the place of? x. This was the y equals 2x plus 4, but I plugged negative 3 in for x. They gave me negative 6 plus 4. y is negative 2. If you were to plug that negative 3 into the other equation, what do you think you would get for the y value? Or just negative 2, right? Remember, the solution to a system is the one point that makes both equations true. So should it be a different y value? So if it's the one point that makes both equations true, should the y value be different? No. Negative 3, negative 2. Negative 3, negative 2. You have more practice with that moving forward, and we need to pay attention to that. Are there any questions about that before we move forward? Today.
That makes sense at least, even if we didn't get a chance to try it. And I will point this out. I know some of us already had stuff written down, but I really liked one of the things that Peyton did um, at the beginning when he saw this is you took some notes on the things you didn't have, right? I just tried to solve it. Okay. Did you check your answers and make sure? Yeah, I got one wrong. Okay. But in general, if I had stuff written up here, could it be important stuff that you need to pay attention to? Yeah. Right? So if I, if I have stuff up on the board, if I take the time to go over something, you should probably take some notes on it. And that, not now at the end when I'm done going over it, but when I was first going over it, it would have made sense to take some notes on it, right? These are important note-taking skills that we need to pay attention to so that we are um, better prepared for future classes, but also specifically better prepared for college. No college professor is going to sit there and remind you, hey, take some notes on what I'm going over. You attend class, you take down notes so that you can be prepared. Okay? So we need that practice in there. So we're going to look at today's objectives. We're going to wrap up 5.3, some of one, none of the other. So let's get started with it. Corel, can you read our first objective? I can represent the value line of the constraint equation, both standard and slope intercept form. So we've seen um, boundary lines. We've seen constraining, constraint equations. There was one new thing that we learned on Friday. Which form of the equation of a line? Standard. Standard form, right? We've seen slope intercept before. What is when we say slope intercept? What what is that form of the equation of a line? It's uh, y equals mx plus b. So you're gonna say Desiree? Yeah. Y equals mx plus b. That's our slope intercept form. But we introduced this idea of standard form because sometimes it's not super easy to see the slope in the y-intercept, but sometimes it's really easy to see the coefficients of x and y. Um, and so what is the standard form of an equation? Ax plus by equals c. All right? Ax plus by equals c. Now there's a couple of small things we want to attend to. If you look over here, it says where b and c are this z letter. What do I mean by that z letter? Integers. We've got to remember Z are the integers. What number sets are we talking or what type of numbers are we talking about when we say integers? Oy vey. If we don't know what the integers are, it's going to be hard to write this equation. I want to say real numbers, but I don't know that's right. Integers are a type of real number, it's a part of the real numbers. Anything in between, uh, any number. That's a real number. Um, is it one? So one, two, three, four, five. It keeps going. Now, I will say zero can be included, but that's not the integers. That's part of the integers. But we're missing half of the integers right now. All numbers. Not all numbers. Say again. Negative. And negative numbers, but not just negatives. Specifically negative um, whole numbers. Now, when you say all numbers, you're talking about stuff like 2.5. Is that an integer? No. Anytime it's a decimal or a fraction included, it's a part of a whole number, it is not um, an integer. But the integer is all those numbers. But notice I make the note that A is a W. What do I mean by W? Whole number. What is special about the whole numbers? That's true for an integer as well, though. So what's the difference between an integer and a whole number? Here's my whole numbers. Whole numbers are only positive. Say it. Whole numbers are only positive. Whole numbers are only positive. And include zero. But we want to notice that the integers, so a, b, and c are all integers, but specifically a is only a whole number, which means a has to be positive. positive. Do b and c have to be positive? No. No, that's the big difference. a has to be a, a positive whole number, um, but b and c can be integers. Okay, so we're going to talk more about that later, but notice we're trying to represent the boundary line. Uh, was that Corel who just read that? Yes. Desiree, hit us up with the second objective. So if we're converting back and forth between those two different forms of a line, remember, those are both equations, right? So what do those equations have to be to each other? 
if we can convert back and forth between them. They have to be equivalent, right? They're representing the same thing, so they are equivalent equations. And what are we going to use to convert back and forth between equivalent equations? Standard form. Well, that's the equation that we're trying to get to. But what allows you to use an inverse but still make that equation equivalent? Um, probably the there we go. we got to remember that if we're trying to create those equivalent equations or equivalent inequalities, we need those properties of equality and properties of inequality. All right, so we're going to think about that here. And then the new thing that we're going to get to finally today, Layla, can you read our last objective? I can use the standard form of line to identify the x and y. So why is the standard form of the line really useful? Now, this isn't the only reason, but what's the reason that standard form is really useful? Okay, well, you do only need two points, but what two points are we going to be looking for? X intercept and Y intercept. If we have that standard form of a line, it's really easy to find our X and Y intercepts. It's easy to make boundary lines, they're boundary lines. Say it one more time. It's easy to make property lines, but they're boundary lines. Very easy to write. Well, so yeah. Well, it depends on the situation, right? If I'm given a Y intercept and a slope, or a point and a slope, then I'm going to want to use one of those two equations, right? But in this case, right, so I asked you all to do number 32. Over the weekend, right, it says use both Carlos's and Clarita's methods to write the equation of the boundary line. Now, what equation did Carlos use? What form of the equation of a line? Uh, Carlos used standard? Oh, no. Slope. Slope. Okay. Right, so Carlos was using y equals mx plus b. In this problem, does it give me my slope? Does it give me my y intercept? If I'm using x as cats and y as dogs? I mean, I would point out, uh, yeah. neither of these numbers are cats and dogs. Aren't all three of these numbers all about money? So have they told us an exchange rate between cats and dogs yet? Have they told us how many cats or how many dogs I'm starting with? No. So I don't have a slope and a y-intercept. That's why slope-intercept would not be the easiest here. What's another representation that you might be able to create, though, that would help you get slope-intercept equation? Graph. Tables, graphs, pictures, all those kinds of things we want to keep in mind that we could use. And we'll look at those in a second. Thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, we can make tables, we can make graphs, and that's actually what we did Right, when we first hit 5.2. But what was Clarita's equation? What form did she use? Say again? Standard, which is? Now, when, one of the things I want to remind you about with the standard form is, this isn't something that any of you even needed to know the name of to be able to write. A lot of us were already writing this form. Because what is multiplication? So when I see a times x, I'm repeatedly adding something x number of times, right? Same thing with b times y. So when I look at this problem here, what could I do for ax knowing that cat x is our cat pins and y is our dog runs? Remember, x is cats. What am I repeatedly adding for the cats? 32? So for the cats, I'm repeatedly adding $32 for each cat run, or cat pen. But for the dogs, I'm repeatedly adding $80. By the way, Devin, if you want to jump back there in group four, um, so that you have a group to work with today, that'd be a good one. Equals... Remember, this is all the startup costs for the cats. All the startup costs for the dogs, and then that could be how much money. Now, one thing I want to point about point out about this is, do, do they have to use all one thousand two hundred eighty dollars? No. They could use less than it, right? So, why are we writing an equation here instead of the inequality less than or equal to? That's the line. Which line? Boundary line, or as uh, Peyton likes to say, the property line, right? Notice, 
if we've got an equation of a line that is, um, or if we have a line, we're going to use an equation, okay? But then here was Carlos's, so make sure you have Clarita's equation down and Carlos's equation down. It'd be helpful if I didn't lose my uh, clicker, which is right there. So there's Clarita, there's Carlos. We'd already looked at this startup cost and the slope intercept, which so I just made a quick little table to remind you. Um, if there were zero cats, we could have 16 dogs. If we went to five cats, we could have 14 dogs. So we're taking away two dog runs and we're adding five cat pins, which is how, in the past, we got our y-intercept to 16 dogs, slope of negative two-fifths, or taking away two dogs for every five cats. So this is what we should have under number uh, two. All right, so this is the back of the first page. What does this be? B is dogs? No. What, what form of the line did Carlos use? It's right next to my head. You use slope intercept. Y equals mx plus b. What does this m stand for? Well, rise divided by run, which is slope. That's what I'm looking for, right? That's my slope. And the way we calculate it is rise divided by run. If that's my slope, then what does this B have to be? Which intercept? The Y intercept. The output when the input is zero. So remember, we talked about the fact that we started out with 16 dogs there, right? And so that was for our startup cost. But as soon as I saw 0, 16, I knew that was my y-intercept, okay? Now, within your groups, we're gonna, I'm going to have you be working on numbers 3 and 4, but let's make sure we understand what we're trying to do in number 3. Show the steps you could use to turn Clarita's startup cost equation into Carlos's equation and explain why you can do each step. So, in order to know what to do, you got to kind of know where to start and where to end. Yes, sir? There's no lady that walks in here. We'll talk about that later. Okay. What it, where are we starting for this equation? Um, what told you to start with 32x plus 80y equals 1,280? Clarita? Right? You could use to turn Clarita's startup cost equation. That's the Clarita's equation. Well, what are we trying to get it to? Carlos's. So what form of the equation of a line did Carlos use? Slope intercept, or y equals... Right, so we're trying to get to slope intercept. So what I want you to do when I release y'all, number three, I want you to figure out, talk about, how could I go from Clarita's standard form to Carlos's slope intercept? We clear that direction. Well, I thought we, were that. we did it for, for space, not for startup cost, Peyton. Uh. So number one was all about the space, we're now looking at startup cost. So for number four, similar thing, but who are we starting with in number four? Carlos, which, what was his equation? Y equals negative 2 divided by 5, x plus 16. Okay, so y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 16, or 2 divided by 5. That's Carlos. But we're trying to get his equation to Clarita's, which, what form did she have? Standard. She had standard, which, how do we write standard? There you go. So go ahead and talk within your groups, try to discuss with each other how do you think we're going to uh, convert each of those things. Now don't forget, these equations are equivalent. So that should give you some insight on how to do it. 
Once you finish up three and four, you may move on to five and six, but I will be coming between the groups to see how you're progressing. So go ahead and get to work.